All right, this is Mr. P. Helps with Algebra 2. This is Unit 1, Topic 1, SLT 1, the nature of inverse operations. Uh, you're given this warm-up. This is your first activator. Uh, you're given directions to get from Edwin's house. I'm sorry, to get to Edwin's house. Uh, so you're starting from home. You're trying to get to Edwin's house. You go north on Route 23. So what might be a good idea is you to draw a diagram. So you're going to go north. So I'm going to call up north in this case. And then you're going to turn east, which is going to be a right on the Orchard Street. And then you're going to go north again, which would be a left onto Avon Street. And then Edwin's house is going to be the fifth house on the right. And there's going to be his house right there. All right. So if you were going to start from Edwin's house and you want to get back home, well, here's Edwin's house. I would have to make a left onto, that would be, I should have labeled it, but I didn't. So that would be Avon Street. And then I would make a right onto Orchard Street. And then I'll make a left onto Route 23. So how did you determine the directions to get home from Edwin's house? Basically, if you noticed, I did everything backwards. I did, not only did I do all of these directions backwards, but I also did everything that was the opposite. Instead of his house being on the right, the first thing I did was I had to make a left onto that street. Instead of making a left here, I had to make a right if I'm going this way. Turn left, then right, then left. So you notice that all these directions were basically backwards. So whatever it takes to reverse everything that you had done to begin with. So those are like your inverse operations, which is what we're going to be doing here. So we first start off with an activator where you are going to take these words and match them with the words over here that you think that are going to undo it. So we'll, what would it take to undo a turning left? To undo it, you would have to turn right. Clicked on the wrong there. There we go. Uh, heading south, to undo it, you would have to head north. Because once you've gone south, you head north, that would get you back to where you began. Uh, standing up, sit down, would undo it. Putting your hand down is putting your hand up back up would that would undo that addition pretty self-explanatory with all of these the square root of something if you square a number times itself you take the square root of it that's just going to undo it and get you back to whatever you started off with same with cubing and cubed root all right so suppose you are given this you started with a number and you add five to that number so we're going to write a function using this set of directions and the function is called r of n uh, we're going to start with a number, we're going to call that n, and we're going to add 5 to that number, so that's n plus 5. And then we're going to divide that result by 3, so I'm going to put this in parentheses, so that means I have to do that first, and then take that result and divide it by 3. And then we're going to subtract 4 from that quantity, so then from all of this, then I have to subtract 4. Uh, actually, hold on. I'm not going to put the brackets just yet. I'm just going to put the minus 4 right here. And then I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to double the, res the result. All right, so now this expression right here represents all of these steps. If you knew the final result resulting from this algorithm was 10, then what was the original number? So R of n represents the original number. n represents whatever you put into that number, whatever the number is you started with. Now, this isn't the starting number. This is the ending result. So that's the R of n. So I'm going to replace R of n with 10, and then I can simply solve using the same expression. Now, I'm going to, for the sake of saving time, I'm going to do most of this in, in my head. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing we did with the Edwin's house. I'm going to do everything in reverse. So if I'm trying to solve for this 10, uh, if I want to get rid of this 2 right here, which is being multiplied by all of this, I would do the inverse operation, or the opposite of multiplying by 2, which would be dividing by 2. So once I divide 10 by 2, that gives me 5. And then next thing, instead of subtracting 4, I'm going to add 4. That's going to give me 9. So I've done this, I've done this. Now I'm going to, instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply by 3. So that turns 9 into 27. And then instead of adding 5, I'm going to subtract 5, which is going to be 27 minus 5, which is 22. So it looks like 22 is the number that you have to put in for n in order to get a result of 10. So just to double check, so 22 plus 5 is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. I just checked it, it works. So write a function b of f such that... When given the result of this function, will get you back to the original number. So 22 was the original number. So we want whatever this function is 
to be able to input the number 10 into that function and get 22 as the result. All right, so we're going to do everything backwards once again. So this time we're going to take our number, we're going to divide it by 2. That's the first thing that, that's the first thing I did when I just solved it, when I checked it. And then I'm going to add 5 to it. I'm sorry, add 4 to it. Because that is the opposite. That is the inverse because we're trying to undo the minus 4. And then we're going to try to undo this divide by 3, which is multiply everything by 3. And then the last thing we need to do is undo this plus 5, which would be at the end, which is subtract 5. And there's your function. All right, write a function f so that when given a number x, that's f of x uh, is equal to when x will be squared. Okay, <coughs> little mistake here, it should say when x is squared and then add 3 to it. So it'd be x squared and then add 3 to it. Write a function s, that's the name of the function, when given a number t, uh, when what you'll do is you'll add 3 to that number, it's t, sorry, t plus 3 and then square that result. Now, you might be thinking these are the exact same thing, well actually they are not because the order does matter. So when you square the number first and then add 3, you're going to get a completely different number than if you add 3 to the number and then square it. All right, write a function f so that when given the original number x, with, with will model the algorithm given above. Okay, so function f, so that's f of x. x is the number that we're inputting. Starting off with a number and add 10 to that number. So that's x plus 10. And then multiply that sum by 2. So that will look like that. If you knew the final result of the number, algorithm was going to be 26. So that means 26 equals x plus 10 times 2. So we're just going to do everything backwards. Solve it like it's an equation, like you did in Algebra 1. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 13 minus 10 is 3. So x would have to be 3. Write a function g. So g of t will determine the original number. Okay, so t divided by 2 and then subtract 10. And that should give you your original result. Starting with the number x, write a step-by-step -step algorithm that describes each expression. Okay, so I'm going to just say this in words because I don't want this video to take too long. So it looks like I would start with the number x and then I would multiply it by 5. Or maybe I'll just do this one. So multiply by 5 and then add 3. Uh, this one would be subtract by 4 and then multiply by 3. So remember, in parentheses means you have to do that first. This one's going to have three steps. The first thing is going to be uh, multiply the number by itself, and then divide by 2, and then add 8. All right, so now write an, alg write an algorithm that will undo each of the expressions. So basically, you're going to do everything in the opposite order. So that means here you're going to subtract 3 first, and then you're going to divide by so basically, I just did the exact same steps here, but I did the steps backwards, and I'm doing the opposite operations. So this one here, it was x, take a number and subtract 4, so and then multiply by 3. So this is going to be divide by 3, and then add 4 down here. And then undo this, you're going to subtract 8, multiply by 2, and then divide by itself. Take the square root of, sorry, take the square root of will be the inverse operation. All right, so practicing some more of these. So here we're going to pick a number, any number you want, plug it in for x, plug it into that function, see what the result is. The result's going to be h of x. Then I'm going to take that answer h of x, take my answer of h, plug it in here, into r of h, the function, and then get a final result. Okay, so if I take the number 2, for instance, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 plus 3 makes 13. And then if I take 13, plug it in for h, 13 minus 3 makes 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2. All right, so that's kind of the idea of what's going on here. So here, I'm going to choose, now it says here, you might want to consider what numbers would be the easiest. Because if I use 1, 1 minus 3 would be negative 2. And negative 2 divided by 5 is going to be a decimal. So I'm going to use 3. I'm doing that on purpose. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. 
Now, some of you might have already noticed something happening, and that is not a coincidence. Uh, this time I'm going to use the number, let's say, negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Now, some of you probably have already noticed that you're getting the same result as you started with. That's because these functions are always going to be the inverse of these functions. So whatever you input into the first function, if you take that answer and input it into the second function, you're going to get the number that you originally started off with. So your x ends up being the same as your results. All right, homework. Uh, first question's been done for you as an example. The expression involving x, okay, so the example's right there. So we've got algorithm for expression. So this would be take number x multiplied by 5, because that's first, and then add 3 to it. So just the expression involving x, that would be 5 times x plus 3. So we're going to leave off the equals because we're just talking about just the expression, not the answer. Take the number, uh, so you're going to take the number x and add 3, and then you're going to multiply by 5. Take the expression, subtract 3, and then divide by 5. Okay, the algorithm's inverse. So the inverse of that would be divide by 5 and then subtract 3. Okay, the writing's not working out so well, but I think you get the idea. Now we're going to solve the equation by using the inverses. So we started with 5 times x plus 3 equals uh, 20. Uh, first step you're going to do is divide by 5. Divide both sides by 5 and you end up getting 4. This divided by 5 cancels out. This side divided by 5 equals 4. Subtract 3 from both sides and you get an answer of 1. So x equals 1. Now I'm going to erase that because I do want to watch the video and now I'm going to do question number 2 and not just skip to the end. I know that trick. 2x minus 8 equals 10. So 2x minus 8. So then we've got, so you start off by taking a number x and you multiply by 2 and then subtract 8. So the inverse of that would be add 8 and then divide by 2. All right, so solving that, so 2x minus 8 equals 10. So doing the inverse operation, so that's add 8 to both sides first. Addition property of equality, so that gives you 2x equals 18. Then divide both sides by 2, and x equals 9. So it's just like you're solving equations back in Algebra 1. All right, so we've got x plus 3 over 2. Uh, first thing you're going to do is add 3. So you take a number x and then you add 3 and then divide by 2. Uh, the inverse would be to multiply by 2. The writing's not working out too well here. And then subtract 3. Solve the equation using the inverse operations. All right, so x plus 3. 3 over 2 equals 4. So the first inverse operation would be to multiply both sides by 2. Those cancel. So we left with x plus 3 equals 8. And then subtract 3 from both sides, meaning the answer is 5. All right. Uh, please give it a like to help you learn something about inverse operations. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.